why would a mother allow this man to keep coming around her child? I was in fear for my son's safety at her house. It's clear with all her and her lawyer's arguments that all she cares about is being with that guy. That's their only argument every time is that she should have the right to see that guy. So she should have the right to keep putting my son's life at risk. I was advised by CPS that until court, once I filed that motion, I would have um, full custody until court. That was going to be the safety plan. Circuit Court is now in session with the Honorable Brian K. Kirkham presiding, calling case 2019-1976-DM, James Brown versus Crystal Brown. Today is Tuesday, February 6, 2024 at 1.32 p.m. Good afternoon to everyone. Court will note the appearance of Mr. Cobb on behalf of the defendant. This matter before the court today is an for evidentiary hearing on the defendant's motion to show cause. Are you ready to proceed, Mr. Cobb? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. And Mr. Brown, are you ready to proceed? Yes, sir. Okay. I would note as the court was prepping this matter for a hearing, the court would note that, uh, again, there was a... Uh, well, I guess there wasn't. I was going to say there was a. Yeah, okay. I was I was looking at something else, so that's fine. So, Mr. Cobb, do you wish to make an opening statement or proceed to your proofs? Uh, opening statement, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, th this, Your Honor, this case we feel is pretty straightforward. The parties here, Mr. Brown and Miss Brown, have joint legal custody over their child. And uh, that's pursuant to a court order dated October 22nd, 2021. And Mr. Brown, without any notification, without any discussion, without any permission, removed the child from school and enrolled him in another school, um, causing Miss Brown to have to go through the trouble of trying to get him re-enrolled. And bo bottom line is this was a, a, a very significant violation of the joint legal custody provision of the custody order. <laughs> um, Mr. Brown indicated when we were at the initial, this initial show cause that was adjourned uh, today for an evidentiary hearing, he indicated that CPS told him to do that, told him to remove the child. This court advised Mr. Brown that CPS doesn't have the authority to change a court order. And if he were given that advice, he needs to file a motion present you know what cps has recommended as as part of his evidence to convince the court to uh give him the relief that he seeks the, this court also scheduled this evidentiary hearing and specifically told mr brown that he would have an opportunity to produce anything that cps gave him i can only surmise that's because if he did receive such instruction from CPS, it's understandable that he may have misunderstood and thought that it had some legal authority. Uh, and I would agree that it, it would be an understandable misunderstanding if that were the case. So we're here today um, and it, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it, it, it's just to ascertain if in fact, from my view, um, Ms. CPS actually did advise Mr. Brown to, to remove the child from the school. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Cobb, for opening? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Brown, uh, do you wish to make an opening statement or you can reserve your opening statement or you can waive your opening statement? No, I, I would like to make one, Your Honor. Okay, go ahead. What it all boils <laughs> down to, honestly, is Crystal's decision to keep putting my son's life in jeopardy and put his safety at risk. Once again, I caught her with her boyfriend, Mac Turner, at the house around my son. She did it for six and a half months after his arrest and after he was bonded out, living there again after he threatened to kill everybody with a gun. Then he was rearrested. Then he's let back out, and I caught him over there again. I provided proof with text message she even admitted, but she tried to minimize the reason why he was at her house by saying he was only there to pick up some things. But still, she admitted he was there. So once again, violating his bond, violating his probation, he was around my son, putting my son's life at risk. He, this man threatened to kill my son. Why would a mother allow this man to keep coming around her child? 
I was in fear for my son's safety at her house is clear with all her and her lawyer's arguments that all she cares about is being with that guy. That's their only argument every time is that she should have the right to see that guy. So she should have the right to keep putting my son's life at risk. I was advised by CPS that until court, once I filed that motion, I would have um, full custody until court. That was going to be the safety plan. CPS knew the whole time I was changing schools because my son can get right on a bus right in front of my house, get dropped off right in front of my house. But right now we're doing everything that is convenient for Crystal, a school that is in her school zone all the way on the other side of town, which puts wear and tear on my vehicle and costs me gas money. Everything in the world that Crystal wants done is for her benefit. Um, before he was ever even enrolled in Lakeview, I put him in Harper Creek schools twice. Crystal refused <laughs> to let him go twice, which held up his education for two years. And then now he's in Lakeview, which is her, you know, her school district. Everything has to be for her. While I was supposed to have the full custody per CPS giving me a verbal safety plan, it would be a lot more convenient and easier for me to have my son in a school that's in my school district and he can get on and off the bus and on the side of town where I have help. Now they want to try to find me and charge me money, which is really starting to get petty because you're taking money away from a household that my son lives in. I don't get welfare. She lives off of welfare. You know, everything's a free handout. So taken away from me is taken away from my son. It's just, it's just ridiculous and it's petty in my opinion. And it all boils down to this. I would not have removed my son from her home if she did not put my son's life in danger repeatedly. Anything else, sir? Well, that's all for now, sir. Okay. Mr. Cobb, you can proceed with uh, your witnesses. Yes, I would like to call Mr. Brown, Mr. James Brown, Your Honor. Okay, Mr. Brown, uh, raise your right hand. We'll have you sworn in, then we'll proceed. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Cobb, when you're ready. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Brown, did you submit any documentation to this court in advance of today's hearing that you received from CPS prior to you removing the child from school? I had a safety plan verbally given to me in my home by the CPS agent, Sandy. She told me the safety plan would be that Elijah would be in my custody until court. It was Let a me verbally just, given if I could statement. interject, Mr. Cobb. Uh, Mr. Brown, the question was, did you submit anything to the court from CPS confirming the removal of the, your son? So I listened to the question and then make sure you answer the question that's being asked, because otherwise we can go on forever in this thing. And you'll, you'll have all the opportunity to present whatever evidence you want. But at this point, it's up to Mr. Cobb. So just simply answer his questions please i was never given anything to submit only a verbal statement did you make any efforts to uh, have the cps representative that you claim told you this information did you make any effort to have her present at today's hearing yes i spoke with the other agent that took over the case because of the conflict of interest with the other agent and she said their boss was not going to allow them to come to court Okay, did you uh, make any attempt, uh, do you have, if anything, to document what you're saying, anything in writing, any kind of emails, what, what other than your statements? Would you, okay, okay, so everything that you have to present in defense of removing your child from school is, is verbal? No. Okay. I've, 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 I've submitted evidence of Crystal admitting that she had Mac Turner at her house around my son again, putting my son at risk. That should be enough proof. She should not even have care of him. So, so th it w this evidence that you're saying you're submitting regarding her, sh she shouldn't have Mac Turner at the house, et cetera. 
Have you submitted that for this hearing today so yes. that we can look at that? Yes. Evidence okay. packet number two, it has a text message from her admitting that he was at her house. Okay. I did not receive any exhibits um, in, in advance of today's hearing. Okay. Well, <laughs> I sent them to you and it was through this judge's uh, assistant. She gave me your email because I contacted you. I called you, spoke to you. You refused to give me your email. I called your office. They said they sent the message to you. I have a text message from your office saying they forwarded to you saying I needed your email. So you've hindered me having your email. So this is on you. And so I can prove Mr. With Brown, my, Mr. Brown, with Mr. Email. Brown, Mr. Brown, don't go off and just argue with the attorney. Answer his questions. And uh, I'll, I'll stay. I'll, hold on. Don't interrupt me either, sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Court would note that uh, the court has not received what you said you had submitted, and in fact, the notice of this hearing stated that you had to provide paper paper copies to the court seven days before today's hearing. We haven't received any paper copies, so I gave it to the uh, circuit court. I gave it to the circuit court, and they said they were going to give it to your assistant. Okay. I took it down there. I will have her check uh, while we're going through this to see if she received anything. Let me go check to see if it's on Jesus' side. We do have one of our staff is uh, is not uh, is off on uh, a maternity leave or a family leave act. So if it's in that person's file, we don't we have received it. Uh, when did you file those exhibits? I took them to the the circuit court clerk's office, and they were supposed to have them sent right to you. Okay, the and question, sir, was when did you file them? I can't remember the exact date, sir, but it was over two weeks ago. So did you email them or mail them? Oh, I, I printed paper copies. And drive and I, off and I, get, I, I printed paper copies and they stapled each one together and they were supposed to give them to you. <clears throat> All right. Um, well, let's me. I'll have to go through Jesus' desk. It was over two weeks ago. Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, I called and I spoke with her and asked how to um, deliver them to you. And I was told I must do it in a paper uh, printout. And that's I physically took them down there and turned them in. And I also had to get the attorney's email from her when I called because he's done everything he could to hinder me from being able to contact him. Judge, I found them. They were underneath <clears throat> Okay. It looks like we have them then. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Cobb. Yep. Okay. So the so the documents that you turned into the court, was it anything pertaining to CPS and and uh, any kind of instructions that CPS gave you in this matter? Only their contact information. As I said, it was a verbal safety plan. 
I was never given a written safety plan. It was verbally given to me in my living room. Okay. Okay. I have nothing further on it. Okay. Uh, Sir, is there any testimony you'd like to give at this point, or you can reserve and give it at a later point? You don't have to do it now. Sir, again, all I would like to just point out is we've been in court several times repeatedly because of my son's safety being put at risk at that address. It's always, don't do it again. Don't do it again. Clearly, she didn't care after... Her boyfriend threatened everybody with a pistol. I just had the police report read to me by CPS the other day, too. He did threaten all the children and everything. It's in the police report. Well, um, and the CPS agent, Christine, is the one that read it to me here the other day. But after he was bonded out from jail for doing that, she had him right back there living for the next six and a half months. Didn't tell anybody that it happened. I, I filed a complaint with the court and I filed a complaint with FOC because why was I never told that my that this man is living with my son, threatened to kill my son? Okay, sir. Let me let me let me just stop you there just to interject. The issue today is whether you violated the order by pulling him out of the school without conversing with the defendant in this matter. It's not about who this other Mr. Turner is or what his action. Are. That's not part of today's proceeding unless you can show that it in a court order that it was a verbal safety plan, nope. sir. You so I, if you can show in a court order that uh, this Mr. Turner is prohibited in some way from being around the child or something of that nature. So you may have a lot of explanations for what you did, but the issue is, did you willfully violate the court order? Well, his bond and his probation well, as he's has, nothing, has nothing to do with us. And okay. then reference. Snyder just put in put in a no contact because he feels there is evidence of this. I mean, if they want to be petty and find me, I mean, for court costs and attorney fees, we're just going to be here again because I'll appeal and I'll appeal and I'll appeal. Well, and you can appeal you all you want. Money, then you I want child support. You can appeal all you want. Uh, all yeah. I'm saying, sir, is we're, we got to confine ourselves to what's the orders of the court and if it's not an order that he's prohibited from having contact, it is. And then you don't have a right to take self-help just to, to do that. You, you can file a petition seeking to have an order to that effect, and the court would enforce that order. But you cannot unilaterally take it upon yourself to do so. So, Mr. Cobb, do you have any more questions? No, Your Honor, I do not. I, it, at the appropriate time, I would like to give a short, short closing, Your Honor. Sure, sure, that's fine. Do you have any more witnesses, uh, Mr. Cobb? No, Your Honor. Okay. Do you rest? I do, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Mr. Brown, do you have any uh, witnesses at this time? The CPS agent said that their boss would not let them come. So, but again, all what I'm saying, Your Honor, is that is a court order. Is a court order by the bond department, by the probation department, that he was not supposed to be at that address or around those you know, kids. And that what that does is that pertains to Mr. Turner, doesn't pertain to this action. And what happens is if you can talk to the prosecutor, you can then go after Mr. Turner for violation of his bond conditions or any other thing that happened as a result of that criminal action. But it doesn't intercede into this particular case. So it's okay for his mother to keep putting his life at risk. That's what the court's saying. Of course not. Okay. Saying that. You're, you're obviously not listening or you, again, want to... Pre allowed it, though, just like she allowed a legal gun to be in her house for, before this incident happened. She allowed all this. She allowed him to be there. She allowed him to come back again and again. So she keeps putting my son's life at risk. And if that's the case, then you have a right to petition the court and ask that the court in this case, that the court would prohibit contact between this individual and the child. You have not done that. Yes, I have. Referee Snyder just did it. Well, you haven't done it before this court. And Mr. Snyder, if he did it, it wasn't in place when the allegations that you changed the school and all of that occurred. You, can, you cannot unilaterally go in and violate the court order and then 
get an order three months later and say, oh, well, that justifies what I did three months earlier. What, what does justify it is her putting my son's life at risk. Okay. I shouldn't have to come to court and ask another man to keep my son safe because okay. his mom can't. And why has she just been constantly refusing drug tests by CPS? It has nothing to do with this action, sir. Okay. Well, I'll appeal. Because all this is going to do is take money away from my son. I don't get money handed to me by the government like she does. Uh, sure, there's no question on the floor at this point. Mr. Cobb, uh, anything else? Uh, no, Your Honor. You wish to make a closing statement? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, it, it, I, I'm tempted to not to even make this direct statement, but I will quickly just state um, Mr. Brown has said a lot of things that I do not believe are relevant and I also believe are inaccurate. I am absolutely not going to attempt to unravel all of that. I don't even think the court would want to go down that road. Um, what we're here today to discuss is why he took the child out of school. And when we were at the first hearing, he said CPS told him he could take the child out of school, um, that he would have custody. You informed him that the CPS doesn't have the right, the, the authority to make a court order. But I agree that if they did indicate that to him as a non-attorney, he could have mistakenly believe that that was an order he could follow. If I remember correctly, I'm pretty certain that he said that they did give him something in writing, which was the point of a journey to today, because he said he would provide what they gave him. I'm almost certain he said he was going to provide what they gave him. If it were just verbal, he could have said that at the first hearing and we would have known that he had nothing to give us other than his verbal testimony. Um, it's clear that he was not uh, given anything that suggests that he had custody and he took the child out without justification. And I think his demeanor here shows how he feels about it. He feels that he is justifiably upset. And therefore, he's justified in taking the action he deems to be appropriate. Um, he even went so far as to say in this very hearing that it would, be, it would be petty to fine him, which suggests to me that he simply doesn't understand the seriousness of his action. We are simply saying that he cannot take serious action that requires the consent of both parents unilaterally. And to hold him accountable and to make him understand that that would not be tolerated it's the farthest thing from petty. It is very important that as important decisions are made between these parents, that they agree. And if they cannot agree, then they both bring their arguments to this court. But he he believes that it's petty to hold them accountable for making a decision unilaterally. So I feel that the fact that the action occurred, the lack of remorse, uh, the high likelihood with such a lack of remorse that no lesson has been learned to prevent it from happening again. I believe it will be appropriate to find him in civil contempt. And what we are seeking is reimbursement of attorney's fees in the amount of $1,500. And we're also seeking the court to exercise its authority to levy a fine. We're simply trying to have it indicated how serious this is and how much this would not be tolerated. Um, I understand the court at its discretion can give a fine up to $7,500. We're, we're not even asking for anything in that realm, um, but uh, we believe a fine of $1,000 would be appropriate. Okay, thank you. Mr. Brown, any closing statement you'd like to make? Yes, Your Honor, I do feel it is petty because I took the actions of a father trying to protect his son from the mother putting his life in danger. As I said, her money's free to her. She gets all kinds of child credits and everything. I have to do everything, break my back to take care of my kid. I don't get the welfare taking care of me, none of that. And I never said I had a physical safety plan. Never said that. I was given a verbal safety plan by the, a the CPS agent, Sandy. CPS led me to believe that I was able to do what I needed to do because of the fact it keeps my sons safe. CPS had a safety plan to where Mac Turner was not allowed at her house. Uh, as I said, he had bond and probation uh, saying he was not allowed there. So for her to keep allowing a man who threatened to shoot your child to come live at your house and be at your house, you don't care about your child. I want my son safe. And as I said, I have to work and break my back for every penny I, I earn. I don't I don't get it handed to me by the government like she does. You know, 
So, yeah, it is petty to take money from me. I was misled by CPS, but at the same time, I was only doing the actions of a father trying to keep his son safe. Every time we're in court, it's because of her putting my son's life in jeopardy. And, yeah, I mean, she's she's worried about attorney fees. We'll be right back here again and again. So, you know, because I'm going to appeal and appeal and appeal and appeal. And if she wants money out of me, I guess I can go for child support then. I do feel it's petty. And no, I do not regret. I do not regret my action because of the fact that my action is to try to keep my son safe from a mother who does not care about her kid at all. Otherwise, you would not allow that man back in your home around your kid. Anything else, sir? No, sir, I just asked the court not to find me because, as I said, what I did was for the safety of my son. I don't put my son around dope fiends, around child molesters. And this is all in court hearings that she's had him around just meth heads and child molesters and everything else his whole life. How many times are we going to be here before my son dies in her care? I, that's that's it, Your Honor. But I mean, if I get fined, yeah, I, I do want to appeal because I do not agree with a fine okay. at all. Mr. Cobb, anything else? No, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Well, the court's heard the testimony of this matter, and I don't want to, uh, I guess, to minimize Mr. Brown's concerns if they are, in fact, legitimate. I don't know because those matters are not before the court today. The issue before the court is whether Mr. Cobb did violate the uh, judgment of divorce dated January 15, 2020, or the subsequent order, uh, stipulated order regarding custody, parenting time, and tax exemption, which granted to the parties both joint legal and joint physical custody in this matter. When, in fact, a party has joint legal custody, the provisions of the judgment and the order will state that the parties have to converse concerning those important decisions affecting the child's life. The orders go into more depth than that, but that's in essence what it states is that you have to converse on those particular issues affecting the child. When you don't, you are in violation of the order. You cannot unilaterally Take it upon yourself to change the order. And unfortunately, maybe at the time that uh, these both of these orders were entered, that the uh, court did not state to you. But again, if you want to change the order, if you want to change, in this instance, school district, you speak to the other party. If you can't get an agreement, you come to the court and you spell out to the court the reason for wanting to change the school district and the court will then make a decision okay we're going to change the school district or we're not going to change the school district but at the point that the parties can agree they have to bring it to the court and the court will then decide that because the parties are unable to do so in this case uh, the defendant has testified and argued that there was a safety plan from cps a verbal safety plan that was given to him in this in this uh, particular regard. He's not stated at any time that there was a verbal safety plan that re required or permitted him to take the child out of the school district. He simply stated that, uh, again, they had told him to apparently keep him away from this uh, Mac Turner in some particular way. So the arguments that he has, although they may be relevant, in some subsequent action by him or some other action, they're not relevant here because even if a safety plan was in place, that does not impact the school district that the child would be in. So, and the defendant has not given any uh, reasonable, logical, or I guess you'd say uh, substantial reason for taking the child out of the school district other than as he stated in his testimony that with by doing that he stated it was more convenient and easier for me if I changed the school district 
from Lakeview to apparently Harper Creek at that time is what he's saying. In this case, the court finds that, in fact, the plaintiff is in violation of the joint legal custody and that he has done so without any lawful or reasonable reason in this particular matter. So the court will hold him in civil contempt of court. Court will note that the uh, Mr. Cobb has asked for attorney fees in this matter in the amount of $1,500 based upon these proceedings. The uh, that does appear to be reasonable in this particular matter, and uh, as a result, the court will grant the award of attorney fees. However, in this matter, the court is not going to grant and is not going to fine the plaintiff in this uh, particular matter. Court just believes that uh, the award of attorney fees is sufficient. It's not more than fifteen hundred dollars on attorney. Fees. We're going to be back. It's not, this is not your time to talk. It's not your time to talk. So the court will grant that at this particular point. Mr. Cobb, you can prepare an order uh, consistent with the court's ruling in this matter, and that will conclude the matter. We'll end this matter at 2.02 p.m. You're free to go. Have a good day. Anything else, Mr. Cobb? Yeah, one quick question. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I, I will prepare the order. Um, shall I have it for my client and myself to sign or just the court's signature? No, I, I'm going to want one of you, uh, want to, uh, probably as you're the attorney of record, I want your signature on it, so...